Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome back to another beautiful episode of Baggage Claim with Jazz and Charles, uh, the only show where you learn how to claim the bag, secure the bag, and most importantly, protect, protect the, bag. the bag. I'm Charles. I am Jazz. This is my coworker, my coworker, and my cousin. And mm-hmm. we are here at the Henderson Financial Group. Uh, before we start, I'm going to drop that phone number. 305-825-1444. Give Once us a again, call. Once again, that is 305-825-1444. Yes. Yeah, you're probably looking, saying, you know, things are a little different right now. Where's the live? Well, we decided to pre-record. You know, something came up, things happened, and we felt like pre-recording would be best. Yeah, we definitely still wanted to give you guys the show on Sunday. Uh, we're really excited about today's topic, so oh, yeah. we just decided to record it, drop it on Sunday. Same thing. Information gets to the people the same way. Uh, today we'll be talking about life insurance <laughs> yeah, don't everybody get too excited at once calm oh down, life down. insurance <laughs> yeah we know it could be a little bit boring when you think about life insurance you think about death you think about dying you think about oh gosh i'm gonna be much older one day or you get an image of some guy going door to door asking your grandma to put some money in a pot <laughs> but this isn't that you know this is life insurance we're only telling you about things that can help you the new school stuff so this isn't just death insurance. This is the new school, the remixed, renovated. And, you know, think about it. It makes sense. Think about the cell phone, the laptop. The first computer or the first telephone, it didn't look like the ones now, right? No, no, no. No, sure. this right here, this is a machine. This does <laughs> everything for you. Show off your new phone, you. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. And, you know, that's the same thing with life insurance. It does so much for you. It's not... It's not the same thing that your grandmother had. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, life insurance has come a long way. They had to stay relevant. The market for life insurance needed to be there. So uh, they had to get innovative. If people are going to want life insurance, it's got to be up to par, up to those 2020 standards. There's a lot going on out there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you can do uh, with different investment vehicles, and life insurance wanted to be part of it. So they had to step up their game and get pretty uh pretty interesting it's not just plain life insurance anymore no you see the stock market now oh yeah it's boosting it's hitting all-time highs if you really want people to invest in you you gotta constantly you know innovate yeah for sure sure. um before we get into all the cool things that are happening with life insurance now we feel like it's really important to uh touch on the basics of life insurance like Mm -hmm. what is life insurance and why you need it before you get into the big boy investing and using life insurance as a tool um i want to start off with (laughs) the reason you need life insurance because before i got into finance before I got my life insurance license I did not understand the concept of life insurance really I never Mm. not that I didn't understand it I never even gave it a second thought I Mm -hmm. never really thought about what it was for the point of life insurance is so that if something were to happen to you let's say you're the breadwinner in your family you're providing you've got a job and even if you're not the breadwinner if you contribute to your household and you are a reason your household is living on whatever level they're living (coughs) on uh, if something were to happen to you you want to leave a lump sum of money to ensure that your family doesn't have to switch up their lifestyle Mm. now imagine you passed away now your wife and the kids have to move out of their home they lost dad and the home you know so it's life insurance really just uh gives your family a nice little nest egg to either keep their lifestyle or put some plant some seeds for late for later uh it really is leaving your family money absolutely and you know it's building generational wealth you know, we talk on that a lot. Life insurance is one of the easiest ways to build generational wealth. Literally. You know, you think about it, you're putting in this money, you know, you can have a million dollar policy, $500,000, and it doesn't cost so much. You know, with life insurance, the minute that you put in the premium, the very next day, God forbid, if something were to happen to you, all of that death benefit goes to your loved ones. And now, you know, yes, you're gone, but you left a legacy. You left something to help, you know, the next generation and especially minorities. This is something that we need. You know, looking at the year 2020, who would have guessed all of this would happen, right? No, no one could have ever guessed. Nobody. And so this is just this is just more of a reason why you need life insurance, because tomorrow is not promised for any of us. You know, when we first heard about COVID, we thought, oh, that's not going to touch me. It's not this. Now, you know. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are, what your demographic is, your background, it's everywhere. everywhere. And so if that can happen, 
anything can happen. So Absolutely. life insurance is a great, great, great way just to, to leave a legacy and pass on generational wealth. And aside from uh, just leaving that money, there are only a few things in this world that are tax free. Mm. If we know anything about America, you go and pay taxes. Yeah. They're going to get you. Whether they get you now or later. <laughs> death and taxes, yes, guaranteed. There you go. So life insurance, the death benefit, that million dollar policy or that 500,000 policy, whatever, it is tax free. Mm -hmm. That is money to your family, tax free. That's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. You know, you think about the Roth IRA. That's a big thing. Oh, no taxes on the Roth. That's beautiful. But you can't really touch it until you're age 59 and a half. Of course, the CARES Act changed that temporarily. But for the most part, you get penalized if you touch your Roth IRA before 59 and a half. Whereas, you know, we're not getting to the strategy as much yet. But we actually use life insurance for a lot of our clients to get them tax-free income while they're alive. Is living benefits, tax free living income benefits. while you are alive. Now that's beautiful. That. No. Nah, yeah. It's living benefits, living right? Living benefits. They got living benefits, you got the tax free income, and we're even here at the Henderson Financial Group using life insurance to eliminate debt. Mm. Give us a call if you want to know more about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you know, life insurance, uh, besides that, you know, we don't want to turn it into a commercial, just <laughs> give you as much information as possible. With life insurance, you can actually use it um, to take care of yourself if you get in an accident. You know, if anything happens to you like a stroke, cancer, it takes care of that. That's called living benefits. So life insurance, it has so many uses. That's why we really want to, you know, give you as much information as possible and help navigate it. Because looking at life insurance, it seems really confusing because there's so many different things to look at. But it's really simple once it's broken down. So before we get into the types of life insurance and the benefits of both and the pros and the cons, I want to explain something called insurability. Mm. There's something called insurability. And if you think about it, a life insurance company, both of you guys, you and the life insurance company are kind of betting on if you're going to die or not. <laughs> because when you're paying that monthly premium, that's just in case you happen to pass away. The life insurance company now has to pay out this death benefit to your beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. But if you are healthy, the life insurance is going to say, the life insurance company is going to say, okay, this is a healthy person. I have no problem giving them insurance or life insurance because I think they'll be around a while. So in the meantime, we'll collect that premium and they live a long time and we're, we're going to be okay but if you're unhealthy the life insurance company is going to say man that person they have either they have some bad habits they have uh they're not that healthy body wise or um their age their demographic so many things contribute but mainly health if the life insurance company sees that you're not healthy they're less likely to want to uh, give you insurance because there's a better chance of you passing away which means they have to pay out that lump sum that large amount of death benefit without collecting your money for years down the line so it's really for life insurance companies they charge you more when they feel like it's riskier to take you on. Mm -hmm. So if you are unhealthy or even older because they feel like you're closer to death, it's going to be more expensive to get insurance. If you're younger and you're a young whippersnapper and you're <laughs> healthy and you're good, it's going to be cheaper to get insurance because they feel like you'll be around long enough to pay them enough premium and they're okay. So honestly, that is insurability. That is if you're healthy or not, if the life insurance company thinks it's worth putting a life insurance policy on you. Definitely. You know, Think about it from this. So this may not seem too relatable, insurability. A lot of young people, we feel like, oh, I'm healthy now. I'm good. I don't need it. You know, I'll be okay. A lot, a lot can happen. You know, you don't know what happens. You know, when you're 20 years old, 25, you're still good. Your knees still work. Your joints are fine. They're not aching yet. And you're able to eat fast food and keep your figure for the most part. <laughs> yeah. So you still go to Chick-fil-A. You still get the Popeye sandwich, yeah. whatever you get. And you feel like, okay, it's good. But it sneaks up on you. Trust me, it sneaks up on you. So <laughs> what you want to do, I'm saying, for real, I see it every day. <laughs> so what you want to do is plan for the future because no one else is going to plan for the future for you. So envision it. You know, you're 20 years old, 25. You get that job. You know, you get the new job and it has benefits. And we love a good benefits package, love right? A good benefits package. Love it, love yes. it. So you get that benefits package. It comes with life insurance. It's real cheap, and so you're happy about that. 
you like this job, you don't know if it's going to be long term because, you know, millennials, we do what's best for us. And there's nothing wrong with that. So let's say you like this job. You're here for a while. Then you get another one. You get life insurance. And so you're going around from job to job until you find one that you like long term. And they include those benefits as well. Life insurance isn't even a thought for you because you know you have it on your job. You chose your beneficiaries who to leave the money to in case anyone ha- in case anything happens to you. And so you're feeling like, okay, I'm taken care of. I'm good. But we see something a lot where people retire. They're 60 years old, 62, 65. And they come here once they're retired. And we ask them, you know, do you have life insurance? Some will say yes. Some will say no until we actually look into it and we see, oh, no, your your insurance is actually expired. And so now you have to get life insurance all by yourself. But you're not 20 years old anymore. You're not 25. You know, unless you're Benjamin Button, it doesn't usually work where you're more healthy younger than you are older. Ha- have you seen it? No, it's not. It's not usual. It's not too likely. And so a lot of people are saying, you know, once they come in and we let them know how insurance works, they're like, man, I, I wish I knew. I wish I knew that's how it was. I would have got insurance for myself on the side because, like Jazz said, the older you are, and, you know, the less healthy you are, the more the insurance costs. Yes. If we had a penny for every I wish I knew while I was young, I wish I knew while I was I'm young. Sorry. Yeah, honestly. And when you're the thing about like the hopping around from job to job, like Charles said, that's OK. You know, you want to find some place that speaks to your soul that you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Um, but while you're hopping around every time you leave that job, that life insurance policy doesn't go with you. And so now uh, you you lost valuable insurability time because now you're retired from the job that you finally found and you walk away without that life insurance policy now you've got to go out and try to get a policy so the solution to that in our eyes would be to keep something on the side for yourself you can't rely on these jobs to really take care of you no one's going to take care of you like you so it's okay that you rely on your job life insurance a little bit But I honestly feel like on the side, you need to have your policy, whether that's a term policy or Mm. a permanent policy. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up. So now it's time. You know, (laughs) we let you know what insurance is all about. You need that insurance. Okay, you need insurance. You're probably like, all right, yeah, I'm young. I need it. Fine, fine. What do I need? Well, there's two different types. At its core, at its base, you know, most simplest point, there's term insurance and permanent insurance. You know, when you think about it, term, just for a time period, Mm -hmm. permanent the whole time. (laughs) That's really what it is. It's pretty simple. But, you know, it goes into it. There are some intricacies. So when you think about term insurance, it just is what it sounds like. You get insurance for a time period. It's temporary. So you could get term insurance for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, whatever time period. And for that amount of time, you will have life insurance. And it's pretty cheap, you know. So for that time period, that's what you have. That sounds like a gamble, right? Yeah. (laughs) I'll keep paying as long as I don't die in this this 15-year term. Honestly, you know, it's literally gambling. It's literally a bet. In fact, think of it like this. All the kids you went to high school with, think of who you know that took calculus and calculus too. And I don't even know what's, I don't all know what's higher than that. All the math. Yeah, think <laughs> about the math. who were the biggest Albert Einstein fans and Pythagorean theorem and stuff. Those people grew up to be, they went to be math, math majors, whatever that is. <laughs> and then they graduated and they became what's called an actuary. Now, actuaries are people who are wizards, basically black belts with numbers. They work for insurance companies. Insurance companies have these actuaries literally look up statistics and based on demographic age, all of this different stuff, they can predict how long you're going to live, when you're going to pass along, what your health are going to be at different ages. So it's you versus the insurance company who has an army of actuaries. You're thinking I'm going to live until 80, 90, 100. And that's great. They're thinking, oh, it's pretty likely you're going to live probably till 75, 80 years old. So you get this 30 year term policy. Let's say, you know, you live it, you pass, you pass it, you live past those 30 years. 
everything you put in is just gone, right? Yes, that's the unfortunate part. Like it's, uh, as Charles said, it's like renting versus owning. Mm. If you are renting in a place because, you know, it's cheaper and right now you can't necessarily afford a house, you do have to understand that every time you pay that monthly rent, it's not stacking up and saving somewhere for you later or just in case you want to buy the place later it's gone it's gone to the landlord and you still have no ownership in that apartment or that condo or whatever so it's the same concept with term insurance it's basically renting life insurance for a little while and if you don't pass away in that time it's kind of weird because it's like <laughs> i better die like if i'm paying all this money but mm -hmm. you don't want to pass away so you you're paying uh, and you're, you're staying healthy and you're doing everything you need to do. You're putting your seatbelt on when you get in the car, mm -hmm. but you're also paying this life insurance for this short term of time. I understand it, though, mm -hmm. just like I understand why you would rent and not buy. If you don't have the money right now to buy, you're not fully invested in a home, but you want something. I think that is a really good idea to get a term policy. If you don't have the money right now, to because permanent policies are more expensive. So if you don't have the money right now to get a permanent policy, get you some term. And uh, it's just it's just good to have some sort of coverage at all times. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, a lot of times we hear buy a term and invest the rest, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you hear, you hear that. Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, whoever else, they'll say buy a term and invest the rest. When you think about it, most people don't do that. They buy a term and spend the rest. <laughs> <laughs> that's really what happens, but, you know, that's okay. If you really want to stick to it, you buy a term, invest the rest. You, you know, you don't have the money that you need to right now. You're still on your starter job. There's nothing wrong with that. Like you said, get some term, but... You can only get away with it for so far, you know, for so long. It's just like renting. You don't want to rent your whole life. You probably want to own at some point because there are so many benefits to ownership. Ownership is everything. You know, we don't want to be renters our whole lives. Absolutely. It's just not what it is. It's not where it's at because everything that you're putting in, you get none of it Gone. back. There's no return on your money. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to rent forever. Absolutely not. You don't want to rent forever. Um, I want to bring in a real life story. We'll see this as like a case story. Mm, okay. uh, this person, we'll call her Janet. Janet had a term insurance policy. She was the breadwinner in her family, uh, making lots of money on her job. And she decided, I need some sort of life insurance. I want a million dollar policy so that if something were to happen to me, my family will be okay. They'll be taken care of and they'll be comfortable. So she got this term policy. It was a 15-year term policy. When she first got it, she was paying $2,400 a year. Mm. $2,400 a year. 200 a month. That's yes. not bad. Very, very affordable. So she did that, and uh, one when that 15 years was up, they said, okay, your 15 years is up. If you want another term, if you want another term policy, another 15 years, now the price is going to be 15000 a year. <laughs> so that price went from 2400 to 15000 a year because in that 15 years, what happened? She got older. Mm. So her insurability became a little more tricky. She's older now. The weight's probably different. The health in general, overall health is just different after 15 years. Probably got some medications now. Probably taking some medications now. She's in her 60s now. So then they told her, if you do want to do it for the first year, it'll be 15000 And then the second year, it'll be 18000 So she sees the trend there. It's going up, up, up. She's like, no mm. way. I'm out of here. All that money she put in <laughs> is now gone. And that's okay. But... There was one problem. She didn't have a convertible term policy. Mm. A convertible term policy is towards the end of your term, they'll say to you, okay, do you want to convert this into a permanent policy? That right there is the loophole. There are benefits for the term policy and there are benefits for the permanent policy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like at different times in your life, one is more uh, is better for you than the other. But what you want to make sure you do, if you get that term policy, make sure it's convertible. That way you can convert it into a permanent policy. Absolutely. And, you know, convertible in term, it's the same price. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like the same thing. It just gives you more options. You always want something that has options. You don't want just straight term. You want term that's convertible because how it works with convertible, let's say, you know, 25, 30, whatever it may be, you get that convertible term. So 15 year, you have insurance, 20 years, you have insurance, 30 years, you have insurance. They don't give you the whole time period to convert it. So let's say you're 25, you get a 15 year, it expire at 40 years old. 
Well, they may give you about 10 years, 12 years to actually convert it to term, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't get the whole time period because when you're renting, you don't get all the power. That's just <laughs> not how it works. You don't make the rules. Nah. And so let's say you convert it within that time period, right? What the insurance company does, they say, okay, you can convert it to, you know, a whole life policy from term to permanent and you're guaranteed it. We can't say no. So even if you got in a car accident in the meantime and you lost a leg or something bad happened or if your health's worth, your health worsened, whatever the case may be, you're still guaranteed to get that permanent insurance because you already locked it in with convertible. You know, it's like renting a, an apartment or something, renting whatever. And then you're like, OK, landlord, I don't have the money right now to buy, but guarantee me that I, I have a time period to purchase, you know, this property. Don't sell it to anyone else. Just leave it for me. Give me a certain time period. Guarantee that I can get it. That's the same as that concept with convertible. So even if your health, health worsened, whatever it may be, the insurance company, they'll turn a blind eye. They'll say, you know what? It doesn't matter. You guarantee to get this permanent. Mm -hmm. That's. I want to point that out again. The insurance company will literally go like this. If something happened to you within those 15 years or whatever that term is, if you got in a car accident and now you are in a wheelchair, the insurance company will literally not hold it against you. In any other case, they will. But in that case, they'll say, okay, you want to convert? We have to act as if you are the same healthy 25-year-old who walks. And there you go. Now you've got permanent insurance. You didn't even have to prove it to us that you're insurable. So so uh, that's the real that's a real perk to nah, that convertible policy. Absolutely. And when you think about it, most term policies actually don't get paid out. You mm -hmm. know, really think about it. Less than 10 percent of insurance of insurance companies actually have to pay out the term. So most people are not just dropping like flies. 2020 mm -hmm. is not a repeat. Um, this is a crazy year. Yes. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen. But, <laughs> you know, this is the exception, not the rule. So. You really want to get a convertible, something that, you know, that will last you. And, you know, with convertible, all the money that you put in before, it doesn't you don't build up that cash value. You know, with permanent policies, all the money you put in, you're building up cash value with convertible. As long as it's term, everything you put in that's down the drain. Once you convert it to hold, you know, to permanent, then you start building up cash value. So that's one of the downsides. But. Either way, it's better to convert it to permanent as soon as possible. Just get that convertible because, you know, you're paying into this term is going for you. And the insurance company is just getting your money because they know most of you are not going to pass, you know, within this certain time period. And so that's just the thinking behind it. Yeah, it is. It is really something betting against your own life, <laughs> honestly. Mm -hmm. But it is so, so important. And um, all right. So let's go over uh, permanent now. Permanent insurance is almost the same thing as term. It's just longer. It's for until you die, um, unless you cancel the policy or something. But it's until you die. And mm -hmm. with, like Charles said, with those permanent policies, now what life insurance has had to do to really get innovative and stay up on the market, they have built cash values into the policies and people are using these cash values as like bank accounts and they're gaining interest on this money more interest than the bank would give you give us a call if you want to know more about it <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah it really is something something interesting and what the thing is about permanent insurance is if you get your permanent policy at the age of 25 mm -hmm. the young healthy vibrant age of 25 and they charge you a rate as if you're 25 years old when you are 80 years old, still working with this policy, 70 years old, whatever, mm. you're still going to be paying like a 25-year-old. You mm. lock in that price. Not only do you lock in your insurability, you lock in your price. And so they can't charge you like you're 60-something. They can't charge you like an older person. They're going to charge you like you're young. And that's why we say it's better to start when you're young. Man, absolutely, absolutely. It just makes more sense, you know. And going back to that renting versus ownership, it's owning. It's the same thing as owning. Think of it as having a house that you get so many benefits from. You know, you always want to own with permanent. You start early, you know, you lock it in for as long as you want, you know, your whole life for the rest of your life. And you're locked in at this rate. You know, it's like ownership. You can always take from the cash value, you know, tax free, you know, no taxes paid. It just locks you in for the whole time period. And on top of that, you still get those living benefits we spoke about. Mm -hmm. If anything were to happen to you, God forbid, 
you're taken care of, your family's taken care of, and you never want to be the person who doesn't leave a legacy, who, you know, you leave your family to pay for the funeral without leaving anything. You don't want to be that person. Funerals are really expensive. <laughs> and, you know, we like to wear all tie white uh, to the funeral. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we look good at the funeral. And you don't want to be embarrassed because you don't have no money. And mm -hmm. you didn't leave your family no money to bury you and put you away nice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you definitely want to look out. You I'm saying look it's out mad expensive, right? It's and then expensive. It's like a fashion show. You look yeah, and you see who got the nicest hat, which grandma has it. Exactly. It's a lot <laughs> that goes gloves, into the it. Hat. <laughs> you got the t-shirts with the face on it. It's level. Yeah. absolutely but um oh one thing about permanent insurance which we almost forgot mm. if you have patience and you get it early and you're paying your premium in 10 years you will have enough cash value in your policy uh to take back everything you've put in so mm. after 10 years if you've paid a premium for 10 years everything that you've paid after 10 years it will be there for you tax free you that can take nice. that out of your policy and it's like you never even paid and you still get that death benefit if something were to happen to you you still get those living benefits it's um like it's like life insurance on steroids these honestly days. yeah <laughs> <laughs> everything that you could want it all has it there you know and it has a lot of different strategies so like you mentioned earlier with life insurance uh, we use permanent policies not only to eliminate debt but we use it as retirement accounts uh, it has so many benefits. And then, you know, when you take money out of a, a permanent policy, out of that cash value, you don't really have to pay it back because the way that it goes, you know, let's say you have $10,000 cash value. Well, you may have a $500,000 policy. The insurance company's thinking, okay, you're taking this money out of your policy. That's okay. You don't have to pay us back because once you die, you know, once you go on to heaven and, you know, your soul is up with the you know the heavens or whatever it may be or whatever you believe in <laughs> once you're gone <laughs> they don't have to you know pay out the whole death benefit to your family so let's say you took out that ten thousand dollars they'll just get it out of your death benefit because you're guaranteed to get it so no matter what you know once you take the funds out you're locked in you're solid you know all you have to do is wait for a certain amount of time and then that life insurance is guaranteed for you Yes, that is something right there. That really is something. And uh, like I always say, if there's a vehicle or an investment or any sort of tool that other people are using to make money, to create generational wealth, to really look out for their family, uh, we as a people don't have the luxury of not knowing about it. We as a people don't have the luxury of turning a blind eye and just saying that's confusing. I don't want to learn about it. It's our duty to uh, be educated. It's our duty to educate be educated and once you're educated you're enlightened and you can make better decisions now you can make decisions for your family's family's family down the line and that's how you'll create that generational wealth man absolutely absolutely oh uh, man okay so we just wanted to give you a little bit into life insurance uh we'll come back and tell you about strategies and different things you can use with it later but we just want to go over the basics uh you think we covered it for the most part? I think so. And honestly, if there's uh, something that we said that was super interesting to you, you want to know more about it, give us a call here at the Henderson Financial Group, 305-825-1444. Give yes, us a call. Yes, once again, that's 305-825-1444. <laughs> yes, so uh, once again, this has been Baggage Claim with Jazz and Charles. We are logging off. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, you all have a great one. Thanks.